Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Rafael Benevides, and today I will show you how to create a Docker Swarm cluster in AWS. This video is divided in three parts. In the first part, I will show how to you prepare AWS to create the cluster. In the second part, the cluster will be created using Docker machine. And finally, we will run a set of containers using Docker Compose. If you want to skip to that specific part or topic, just click on the link in the YouTube video. So let's start with AWS. The first thing that we need to do in a AWS is to create a VPC. VPC v means Virtual Private Cloud. So let's start the VPC wizard. We can take the single public subnet and I will give here the name my docker cluster. In this case I have a preference for US East 1. I can leave all other values as default and create the VPC. Remember that we will be using Docker machine to interact with AWS. To that communication to be possible, we need to define a user. I will create here my user, and this user has the following access key and secret access key. I need to store that information. So I will download the credentials. And now I need to give this user the permission to create nodes. I will take here the administrator access because it also needs to create security groups and other things related to, to the Docker Swarm. Now that I have this AWS set up, I will use the following script. I have a script here that uses Docker machine to create the Docker Swarm cluster. This script here is very similar to the instructions from Docker website. The only difference is that the, this document instructs you to run the Docker machine to create a cluster in VirtualBox. In this case of this video, we will use the Amazon EC2 driver to create the same cluster but in Amazon. To be able to Docker machine to interact with AWS, we need to provide the information about the access key, secret key, and VPC. So let's give this information using the environment variables. If you need to take a look on this script, this script is also available in the following repository. You can find the script in this repository. The link is available on the video description and you can go to the swarm folder and see the swarm create a AWS. So as I said, Let's define the environment variables. The access key ID, we have that information on that file that we downloaded. And the VPC ID, we can get it in AWS. Now let's run the script. The video 
will be edited to cut the long time of the creation and to make it faster for people who are watching this video. When we use Docker machine to create a Docker Swarm cluster, the Amazon EC2 driver creates a security group called Docker machine. To be able to make these machines to communicate between them, this rule, this group here, Docker machine, should be modified. So not only the port 2376 should be allowed, but every other port should also be opened. So all TCP traffic, all UDP traffic is allowed for this security group. Now I can proceed with the swarm creation. Okay, now we have our cluster created. We can use Docker Machine LS to list all the nodes that are part of this cluster, which is called AWS Swarm Master. Note, note that this cluster has the master and two nodes. If you want to create more nodes, you just need to run this command again and change the name of the node to node 03, 0, 0, 04 and so on. To connect to this cl cluster we can use docker machine env and the AWS master name. But we need to take a look on a very important detail. When we specify just env and the name of the host, it will return for us the port 2376. This is the port of the Docker daemon running on that host. But we want to connect in the cluster. So we need to specify dash swarm. Note that the port now is 3376. So let's run this command to set these variables and point our Docker client to that machine. Note that I can do a docker info command and I will see all Docker hosts here as if they are just like a single one. So I have here the total of 3 CPUs and 3 gigs of memory. Now I will run the following application. I have here a test environment that is composed by an HTTPD Apache web server with the mod cluster. I have also a container running Wildfly plus Ticket Monster. Ticket Monster is a demo application from Red Hat. And I have this application connected to another container running Postgres. These three containers here are defined in the following Docker Compose file. As you can see here, this file contains the definition of a network and the three services that I just mentioned. Here you can see the image, the ports, the environment variables, the name for each one of these containers. So let's run it inside the 
new cluster. Before running the, this service, I will use Docker Compose Poll to get all images from Docker Hub and place it inside my cluster. Note here that all nodes will have the images available. Now that all nodes have the image available, we can do a docker compose app and it will start the containers. As you can see here, all containers were started in interactive mode and I can see the logs of all of them. With dash d, I can start these containers in detached mode. I can do a docker compose ps to list all containers that are running and its ports. And I can do the ordinary docker ps to see that each container is running on a separated node of the cluster. I can use docker compose logs to get the logs of all service. Docker Compose also allows me to have information about the host and port which each service is running. So, if I want to access mod cluster, I can do Docker Compose port mod cluster port 80 and it will return and the IP and the port that I should access to see mod cluster running. So the with MCM URL I can see the mod cluster and it has the ticket monster application available. Suppose that I want to scale Wildfly, I can use Docker Compose scale Wildfly equals 3 for example and it will start more two nodes. I can use docker compose logs to verify that both containers are running. I also can see that these containers are available here on mod cluster. If I want to scale down I can return modfly to one instance and it will stop and remove the other two existing Wildfly containers. Docker Compose also allows me to stop those containers and remove them. So if you like it, this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and social networks. Thanks for watching.